Hi everyone, it's Sandra and it was 12 days ago. This is my uh, bin Cinderella. That was 12 days ago that I gave Cinderella those bones that had been through my pressure cooker. And a lot, they were really stinky bones. So let's go in and take a look at them. I'm just gonna fold back the burlap. I see lots of springtails here on the surface. And I'm just gonna dig up the end away from the feeding first before we go in and take a look at the end where I fed. Good moisture, Cinderella. Looking great. Look at the size of that cocoon. Wow. I'm just so privileged to be the caretaker of these gorgeous Vancouver Island worms. And uh, when, yeah, it's not hard to spot those cocoons. Boy, if you, uh, if you were a breeder of these worms, county cocoons would be a piece of cake because they are huge. There's, a, there's one about ready to open. Look at the size of those cocoons. So really great moisture. And those are, is that springtails or is that bone? Those are springtails, I think. They all moving? I guess it's a mix. It's a mix of, well, it could be eggshell grit or I could be getting into the bones that I uh, put in here. Let's just uh, turn it up a little bit more. Some of the bones are really small and they will go very, very quickly. And some of the bones are a little bit bigger. Now these are all poultry, uh, I believe chicken poultry bones. So not huge. And they'd been through a pressure cooker, which had softened them up, like stripped them of their collagen. And I'll put the link to the last video where I explained the bo bone science behind uh, how the bones uh, are being stripped of their collagen may help them deteriorate. Let me just turn over our bone graveyard and we'll see how it's doing. I'm prepared to feed, but I don't necessarily need to feed if I feel these worms still have a lot going on. There they are. Oh, there's a lot going on in this bin for sure. Those aren't bones, those are road trip forks. <laughs> Look at the worms on them. Okay, let's go bone hunting. I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? Because I've got sticks in Cinderella. Oh, come on, bones, bones, come out, come out wherever you are. Look at the worms just everywhere. Worms, worms everywhere. Oh, I see a bone. Here's a bigger bone. And is that a worm down the marrow of the bone? Let's see if it moves. Put it in the light. Is that a worm crawling down the middle of the marrow? I believe it is, but it's not moving. It could be the tail end of the worm. Let's check the other end. Not, and there's a bone there. There's another equally sized, maybe a little bit smaller bone. There's the marrow end. Oh, look at the spring tails. So you know me, I couldn't resist but to go look at the research again to see what role springtails may have in the whole breakdown of bone uh, through the composting, vermicomposting process, especially when the bones have been exposed to heat. Um, the researchers talk about a process called diagenesis, which is the conversion of bone into its individual mineral uh, components that then can be used um, in our soils um, after the action of the microorganisms and the worms. So I looked through the research and I'm putting this study here that I referred to um, uh, alongside my head here. So you also can look it up if you like. 
And this uh, team, they buried a whole bunch of bones and followed them over the course of seven years. And they exposed them to different pHs and temperatures and moisture and tried to determine you know, some of the characteristics of bones as they degrade naturally over time. And they compared cooked and uncooked bones. Now the cooking was boiling or roasting and not pressure cooking. So pressure cooking is like boiling on steroids. And so, you know, when I look at their results for boiling, I can see why my results, even after only 12 days, are an accelerated version of what they found. Now, interestingly, this I thought was really neat. Uh, poultry bones are actually more resistant to decomposition than lamb and, and beef and, and, you know, other mammals and, and mammals actually, which I thought was really interesting. And it goes down to the nature of bird bones um, itself is that the bones on, on a bird are, are not bone density is greater, but the coating on the bone is tougher. And on uh, a mammal, it's, um, it's got more um, vascularization and porosity. It's basically got more holes in it. And that goes to how these researchers also determined what happens when bones are buried in compost heaps. Um, and that is that they are attacked first by fungi. And the, the hyphae, those little figury things that you see in fungi, they actually start penetrating bones and creating pits and channels through the bones um, that great, that expand and expand and expand as more hyphae go in there, more fungi go in there. And actually even the mycorrhizal fungi have a relationship to play here. So it's the fungi that really are the rock stars when it comes to breaking down bones buried in a compost heap. Now, what I did by putting my bones through the pressure cooker, remember I extracted the collagen from them? Well, these researchers talk about another reason why poultry bones may be so resistant uh, to decay is because they are rich in collagen. And remember, in that previous video, I talked about the matrix that collagen forms and that makes bones resistant to decomposition. So the more collagen a bone has, the, uh, the less likely it's going to decompose um, quickly in a compost heap. So here you go. I use poultry bones in my bone broth because I want the collagen in the bone broth. And that's why my poultry bones are breaking down. So now let me get back to the issue of springtails. Well, the researchers found what they call soil fauna, which basically means life in the soil um, from animals, um, was not a uh, part of the bone degradation process. They said there was some, um, in, you know, uh, uh, there was some indication that some beetles had nibbled on the metatarsals and other par parts of bones over the seven year period but that um, insects in the soil were not part of the process. And so uh, th there was one comment about springtails on cattle bones, but uh, most of the, the breakdown is first the fungi and then the bacteria. And that's probably why it takes, um, well, they said there were still bones remaining after seven years in a regular compost heap. So my little experiment here is not what you're going to typically find in a compost heap because of the pressure cooking. I really think that's pivotal. If you have buried non-pressure cooked bones, either in a worm bin or a compost heap, I'd be uh, interested to find out your experience, um, you know, because... You know, obviously we have fungi in a worm bin, we have bacteria in a worm bin, we also have those bin critters. And I think the springtails in my situation, because these bones are so soft, they haven't created that armor that the researchers talk about, that bones as they dry and harden even more through baking or cooking, sometimes that hardens them up and makes them more resistant to decay. Well, that's not the case with pressure cooking. So I think it all comes down to the mode of, of um, cooking the bones uh, that has made after 12 days the results that I'm finding here. 
All right, let's get back to Cinderella and see what happens next. Look at the springtails in that end of the worm or of the bone. There's your ecosystem in action. And there's a really small bone. Well, certainly not as small as a neck bone. Um, let me just see if I can break it still, because coming out of the pressure cooker, they break. Oh yeah, look at, you know, look at it's just it's just it's just pulverizing into bone dust in my hands. So it's maintained its softness. And um, let me just try to break one of those big bones and see what happens to the bigger bone. Harder to break, but still broke. And so, yeah, the, the, you can see, see, see the inside of the bone there, the redness on my finger, that's the bone marrow smearing around on my gloved finger there. Here's a bigger bone. Um, you know, even if they stick around um, longer than I'm willing to wait, I'll just be able to run my hands through and, and break them up into dust. There we go. All right, so those are bones. And you can see um, some springtails along for the ride on the leaf there. Remember, I put a, a one dried leaf into the bin. And so the springtails are on the leaf and the worms. And the worms. So, so that's cool. Uh, so, I mean, I put a lot of bones in there. And so I found a few. Uh, I don't think I found all of them. Let's just dig up this last corner. And I do think I'll give this bin a feeding. Uh, certainly the worms are still clustered in this feeding zone. There weren't a lot in the other end. Oh, and these are the roses that I gave, that I gave my bin, my Valentine's Day roses. So it wasn't a big feeding. It was mostly a stinky feeding with the bones. So... Uh, oh, and then the, I thought that was a bone. That is, that is Prince Charming, my adorable feeding zone indicator. All right. So again, I'm looking at cocoons. Look at the, the cocoons just starting to emerge here. And the worms just all over, all over this material. There we go. So uh, I am going to feed again. So I'm just going to put some of this big material down the bottom. And then uh, I'm not going to worry about uh, burying the bones. Um, I do think that they will just make their own way uh, into, into that bone dust over time. Now that we know that they're still soft. You know, if the bin was on the dry side, I think the bones might re-harden after being out of the pressure cooker. And then maybe it would take longer for them to decompose. But because I put them into the bin soft, that is, is that, no, that is a pepper seed. I thought that was a cocoon, but no, that's a pepper seed. And remember I shoved some of the stuff in the toilet paper tube. So those are the remnants of the worms in the toilet paper tube. So I think if your bin was really dry, uh, bones uh, would take longer. Uh, but because uh, Cinderella was moist and continues to be moist, and a good moist, uh, I think th I, those bones will just take care of themselves from now on. I don't think I need to worry about them any more than I would any other chunkier bit of, of material in a bin. All right, so let's just put some fresh carbon down. I've got some plant trimmings from some house plants. Another toilet paper too. Some shredded papers, various papers, craft papers, office paper, and newspaper. And then some food that has that actually has eggshell grit. Uh, already built into it. You know, this worm bin obviously has a huge amount of grit now in those bones and the, um, and you know, and, and pH buffering. So it's grit and pH buffering. 
So I don't think I need to add grit, but it was already into that food, so that doesn't matter. A bit more carbon on the top. And I'll just flip over this burlap to put that material on the top. So there's the experiment um, for Cinderella and her pressure cooked poultry bones and you know rapidly disappearing this is 12 days in and so I think that if you know several people have said that they were um you know just you know going to to start trying to put bones in bins so my advice is to start with poultry bones and pressure cook them first I'm trying to get that in the corner there we go pressure cook them first so that they are as soft as you saw me just being able to crumble them so easily. And that will mean that your worm bin should be able to take care of them in no time at all. Thanks so much for following Cinderella's journey. She has a playlist and I will link to that previous video in the description. Thanks everyone. Bye for now.